Hi, I'm Gaynor Dickerson. I'm going to paint a yellow flower in colour pencil, as normally yellow is considered difficult unless you know how. I'm going to show you how I do it with this free montadendron. At the moment, I'm transferring my line drawing to my art paper using a decoupage tool. And I'm using it in this way so that I don't leave indents on the paper. Once I'm satisfied with the tracing, I check my lines on the art paper to make sure that they're consistent with both my line drawing and the plant that I have in front of me. For this, I'm using a very thin grey pencil. Normally, I wouldn't do this. I'd just have my ordinary graphite, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. With yellow flowers, I always start doing the form underneath the yellow. Yellow itself is a very pale pigment and the pencils usually act as a resist. This is why it's considered fairly difficult to paint yellow flowers. But if you do all the form in the darker colours before you lay the yellow, then you generally have much less problem. In fact, you don't have problems. But always it's important to lay the darker colours first and to lay it very gently so that you can get different layers of colour on top of each other. Normally I like to use for my greys two colours. In Faber-Castell they used to be a light violet colour which was very suitable but now they no longer make this. So I make my own using a pale blue and a pale magenta colour. If I do use a grey I try to use a cold one for the distant part of my picture and warm for the nearer parts. In this way you're more likely to achieve depth in the painting. You can see that I'm using quite a few different colours here. Building up the under colours on my petals. On this petal I'm using a warm grey but you saw the first petal I used a cold grey. But I'm still using a warm magenta on top of the warm grey if I want it nearer to, but on the back petal, which I want to have further away from me, I'm using a, a lot more blue underneath. I'm using either a sky blue, which is the Faber-Castell one, or a Derwent sky blue, which is very much paler and very useful if I need a pale blue. So now I'm getting the detail into the picture. The areas around the centre of the painting or the centre of the flower. I'm using, using a permanent olive green here and sometimes I'm using an earth green. As you can see I'm leaving the stamens well alone so that gradually they will appear from the background. I need to keep those as clean as possible because they will be fairly pale on the finished picture. Some of the detail I'm putting in here 
as well as form of the leaf, that's the shadows of the leaf or the petals, they also have veins. And the direction of the veins helps to create the form in addition to the shadows. Always I'm using very tiny strokes and I'm doing it very gently so that I can get more layers of pigment on top and therefore a greater depth of colour. I'm using mauve here to start off the leaves. I won't be finishing off the leaves in this video but there will be another video with the work on there. I often use mauve under the green and that helps to make the green darker even if I'm using a dark green. One always has to remember that in colour pencil you can never make a darker colour than the colour of the pigment in the pencil but you can make the colour darker by using colour theory. And in this instance, if you have purple and a green, it will make it darker because basically you're mixing the three primaries. On the back side of the leaf, I started off with using earth green. And the colours on the back side of the leaf are usually paler than the uppermost side. At the moment I'm doing the anthers and for this I'm using very thin pencils. They are a hard waxy pencil so therefore I can get small detail with them. Normally I use Faber-Castell polychromos which are firm but oil based. Now you can see me working on the what I have been calling a pe petals are in fact sepals and they are fused at the base to form a tube for the reproductive parts. You can see those holes round about, that's where the each of the sepals is fused. So I'm using quite warm colours on the sepals at the front. And generally you will find that the sepals on the outside of the bud are a warmer colour than the ones forming towards the inside. So now I've started adding a yellow which was a cream in actual fact. And then I've started adding Naples yellow on top of the warm colours that I've been putting on. And the warm colours underneath are really helping to make the, the yellows on top glow warm. So I'm mixing between a, a Naples yellow, chrome, in fact, all, my, all the different yellows that I have in my polychromos set. Some of them are warmer, some of them are colder. That's a chrome yellow. As you see, when I put the yellow on top, I've still got the darker colour underneath the shadow and the form so I'm not having to worry about the fact that the yellow is a resist and if I do want to strengthen a colour as long as I haven't laid the yellow in very firmly I can normally add just a little bit more without it lying on top of the, the previous layer. You can see this sepal at the back, 
it's a lot colder than the others both because it's going away from me and because the sepal itself was more yellowy a more sharper yellow in actual fact so I'm using green gold in the shadows here a little bit more grey for the veins and a little bit green gold again for the the shadows back to my ochres and naples yellow this is where the statement blue and yellow don't always make green unfortunately I'm doing this pe uh, painting over several days and evenings therefore I need additional light and this of course has an effect on the colours that you see in the video I'm using quite cold yellows and a cream on the top. Now you can see the, the light has changed completely. And I'm back to using the very warm colours on the sepal in the front. I'm increasing the level of pigment on the veins of the sepal. Some of them have a little bit more green in them and some of them are just warm colour. So I'm still varying all my colours between terracotta, oranges, yellows. And just gradually increasing the depth of colour but all the time keeping my touch gentle and my pencil very sharp Increasing the warmth. I usually have two colours in my palette that I can't be without. And they appear in most paintings. One is the red violet that you see me using on and off here. And the other one is the mauve that you saw in the green leaves. One is very good for warm shadow and the other one very good for cold shadow. I hope you noted all the colours that I used on the sepal on the bottom before I started adding yellow. There's quite a range of colours there and the yellow brings it to life. Now I'm using an embossing tool. I don't normally use anything like this unless I have to because if you use an embossing tool it damages the paper and you can't rectify it. So you need to know where you are using it and how. I'm using it because along the edge of the sepals they are very hairy and I want to make sure that I don't put colour in a straight line along the edge of the sepals. I want the hairiness to show through. So if I emboss the area or emboss small marks then nothing will go into that little mark I make. 
You won't see it at the moment, but you will when it's finished. Only very, very slightly. I know I've said that you can't lay much colour on top of yellow, yet I was putting a darker colour on top of the yellow. I've got a lot of dark colour under the yellow on the bottom petal, sepal, but I was still able to add a little bit more dark colour as I'm using blue-violet as a shadow along the edge of the very sharp yellow sepal. If I'd used those colours directly onto white paper they would be very deep but I only wanted a gentle hint of a tint and so therefore I was able to do that in the layers on top of the yellow. Now my last sepal I've used a lot more blues and pinks in the form of it rather than greys. Grey often looks a little bit flat but with blue and pink you can vary your grey a lot more with just the two colours. And then on top I'm using Naples yellow and the green gold in shadows. I'm using quite a bit of green gold in, the, in this area. Now I'm starting to put on a little bit of the yellow. And you can see the areas where there was no colour at all. The colour is quite strong. But with the colour underneath, the form, the veins, that shows up very well. So with yellow you have to make sure that you don't put the colouring under in too strong a colour, otherwise it comes up very dark. It's better to have too little than too, too much. You notice that uh, several areas which are left white on the sepals And I use the white of the paper quite a bit to help create form. In some areas I might have found that I'd put on too much colour, so I used my put putty rubber to lift it off a little bit. I'm back to using my blue-violet here and there, and a little bit on the edge of the sepals. Now I'm back to doing the anthers. As you see, they're quite clean to start off with so that they show up against the background of the sepals. So I edge them first a little bit on the shadow side. And again, I'm using the very thin pencils. It's a Palmer Violet. and the Faber-Castell pencils for the yellows. Now the anthers are quite orangey. In fact, they're almost a, a terracotta colour. And I have used terracotta, orange, brown ochre, as well as the yellow. slight amount of Tuscan red really helps bring out the anthers. I'm adding a little bit more shadow behind them so that they can lift forward even more. I 
I can only put on the darker colours on top of the yellow because I have laid the yellow very lightly and I can't stress this enough. I prefer not to lay dark colours on top of the yellow but sometimes I can emphasise things a little bit. You see that I pulled the little bit of plastic sheeting to protect the, the flower and you've probably wondered why I'm wearing gloves, cotton gloves. That's so that the grease from my hands, the natural grease from my hands, doesn't get onto the paper. And I use as much protection as possible because the pigment from the pencils drops down generally under my hand so I have to be careful that I keep that area as clean as I can. I'll generally have to lift off pigment afterwards. This is turquoise. It is a, a colour I would never normally use in botanical art. But when I was doing this leaf, I could see that there was a slight turquoise underlying it. Now, as long as I don't use any pale colours on top of that turquoise, I should be all right. Don't use creams or whites or even a yellow as such on top of them because it will become strong. I've used a lot of uh, green gold on top so that it is pushed it back a little bit a little bit of pale blue so I'm keeping the underside of the the leaves pale and generally on the underside of most leaves there's a couple of colors I generally use and they are Earth Green, which is a Faber-Castell, and also a Derwent Light Moss. I use a lot of other colours as well, but those are ones that seem to come again and again. The backside of leaves are generally much paler, less intense colour than the upper side. Now the leaves are rough they are almost hairy I'm trying to get this effect when I do them is very important they're not smooth they're not shiny they are very textured You'll probably notice that with all of this that I've done, I have not pushed any of the colours in at all. I've just used colour layer upon layer. And here I'm making the veins smaller and smaller and smaller just inching in a little bit. You'll generally find on leaves that uh, the mid vein is wider than the side veins. And like all of us, it's easy to do fat veins all over. This is again why I don't like embossing veins because if you do, you damage the surface of the paper and you're stuck with your wide veins. I used madder there on the stem to the leaves. The stems are very rough, almost hairy. 
and that texture needs to be seen when you draw the, the stems. I'm using a, a brown sienna slightly on the edge of the sepals but I don't want lines round them. I just want to make sure that they're clean and clear. All the colours that I have used in this video are listed and attached to the video. Thank you for watching.